I'm Kenny. I've spent the last 13 years living on the road, hitchhiking all over the planet. And this is Nick. We grew up together. Now we're embarking on an adventure to see the best breweries on the planet. We'll be hitchhiking, meeting amazing people, and drinking phenomenal beer. It's the backpacking beer adventure. Let's get hopping. See you, Huey. It's been real. You're not coming with us, unfortunately, so back off so I don't have to chase you. Peace out, Huey. I'll give Lewis the news, all right? How's the baby doing? She's doing nice. I think I'm gonna start burping her a lot less. Oh, yeah? Let her build up, you know? For the home stretch. Option A. We go down to the eight, stick our thumbs out. Westbound. It's kind of a weird spot, but you never know. Another option is to take the green line to the five or the 15. Uh, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Cars are coming kind of fast around the turn. Not much of a pullover area. We can look over there. <laughs> Worse. Southern California, a lot of it sucks for hitchhiking. Once we get a little north, we'll be doing all right, and then it'll get worse. <laughs> it'll get worse. Going down to that signal. How's the coffee? Uh, not good, but good, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that'll help. That'll get us out of here. We've been here two or three hours, so we're going to go further up by five. Uh, we were filming like a uh, documentary. She said she was going to Bakersfield, so that would have been, you know, a ride. But then she has to see our IDs and was like really grilling us. She go started Googling the show, Googled your name, I think. Just didn't feel comfortable giving us a ride. I've never had anyone grill me that much. I've had people like ask for my ID before. All right. Well. Five hours now standing in the same spot. We've got a lot of people signaling to us, like, you know, like, oh, I'm going just a short distance. A little bit, going that way. Shrugging the shoulder, like, you're a tough luck kid. Guy just now that swiped, literally swiped left. Yeah. As if we were Tinder. Yeah. Or that his point ahead, like, I'm going that way. I'm like, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> I just want a beer so bad. I want to be a barrel house with an imperial stout. We don't ask for much. Just a ride for hundreds of miles and some beer. <laughs> Pretty simple concepts, really. We will get there. This might take a while. You guys can't hitchhike from the ramp. You gotta get off of there. Okay, so down there? Gotcha. We're at the junction of I-5 and Route 46.
enjoy this jump. <laughs> I am thirsty. This place is gonna be awesome. Fire jam. Oh, holy crap. Hey man, Russell. Nice, nice to nice meet you. Let's set you guys up with some beer, and then I'm gonna have uh, my assistant manager, Jesse, he's gonna take you on a tour. He gives the best tours around. We got the uh, the old system up there that they were brewing on the garage. Oh, nice. The Home Brewers Deluxe up there. Yeah. And uh, they were kind of brewing away in the garage and everybody was coming over to drink their beer and they were like, hey, wait a minute, let's do this for real. We've been here almost seven years. Our grand opening was right around March or so. We got the new brew system getting put together, 80% bigger than the last system and a lot wow. more efficient. Uh, as far as I've been told, the old, yeah. old system was very manual. You know, they're unplugging hoses and literally dialing in the temperature like cold and hot. The mash tun, they were basically having to stir it from the top by hand with like a snow shovel. These three tanks are kind of new and then the other side are all fermenters and you'll see some more on the back side that are kind of bigger. These are what we started with and then we've kind of expanded. The little a Grundy uh, used for kind of small batch stuff. We do like a coffee blonde. So they'll make the beer in that and they'll just steep the coffee beans. We're not quite that big yet. Yeah. So growing slowly but surely, naturally, without putting yeah. a bunch of beer out that nobody wants to drink. These are 120 barrels. Um, so we've been adding about two a year since we started. Um, and then uh, this last year we added four. The bottling wine we added a couple years ago and that allowed us to get into the, uh, the 12 ounce sizes. So the canning line and the new brew system came from the same place. It was an old uh, cold brew coffee um, company that went out of business and we tried some of their coffee and I know why they didn't make it. It wasn't very good. Gotcha. There's a partnership with a local uh, bike shop. You could uh, come win some bikes. I put my name in there already. So yeah. This is the canning line. It's called a depalletizer. So it takes off each layer and then it kind of runs it through the machine and then out the other side. They just kind of have to take them off and palletize it. From what I'm told, we spent top dollar on this thing. So it's state of the art. Our cooler, clean barrels, our cans, kegs, and stuff that we use just for the tap room. Yeah. And a bunch of various things like hops and you know employee groceries and whatnot. Us bartenders get off of work after the grocery store is closed. Uh, so you just okay. bring your groceries to work and then take it home. It's nice. Bourbon barrels, there's some rye barrels in here, a couple tequila, Ooh. and then uh, the rum barrels, the ones you see with like the plugs in the side. The cool spot to hang out in the middle of summer when it's 104 outside. Sandwich and a beer, yeah. get back to yep. it. <laughs> yep, yep. Back when I first started, this was kind of just a random warehouse of barrels and kegs and all that, and then like a couple rows of merch stuff, and then it's slowly expanded outside. So we have like all the kegs and whatnot are outside and bottles and C-Train. The merch has kind of gotten its own like little cabinet storage, which is super nice. Exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to be a part of. Oh, <laughs> it is. It is. And it's fun to be able to see it change from a big old warehouse full of boxes of hoses and <laughs> whatnot. And then now it's a full blown production spot. Our back lot. That's our grain silo. So it's all the base malt, all American two row. That's whole grain. So it'll get milled into a mill room. Augers all the grain into the mill. This we upgraded last year. Compared to our old one, it's much more state of the art, so yeah. it's much nicer. Back when I was part-time, I picked up some hours washing kegs, put headphones in, plug away, and yeah. clean some kegs. It's kind of fun. You guys could probably spend a whole weekend here in Tin City. There's 30 wineries, a distillery, a cider house. It's kind of the new tourist area because there's so much to offer around here. It's always a various state of disrepair over here. This is like actually a production spot, but we do rent it out for um, events and whatnot. We had our Christmas party in here one year. Fooders for our base sours. Add some other things like strawberries or grapes or poulots. We've done all kinds of random things. I think the tequila ones have blueberries in them right now, or they did uh, not that long ago. Back in the day, we did a uh, like a snake bite in this thing. So it was like, there was some apples in there. It was aged for at least a year. It was pretty tasty. We've actually scaled down our barrel selection a little bit. We're still going strong. Yeah, here's a barrel house. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. I remember 
remember coming here 2013 or 14. We were coming down specifically to go to Firestone Walker. We gotcha. got dropped off at Peachy Canyon Winery. Just okay. To kill some time. Yeah. The boyfriend of the girl pouring us wine offered to give us a ride to the brewery. Nice. Bought us a couple rounds and he's That's like, cool. there's this other new brewery. Yeah. You wanna check it out? We're like, hell yeah. That's rad. I like that little employee chill spot. Yeah. That's a good yeah. spot. Our owners are also got a, a construction business. So anytime we need to add any sort of construction, it, it happens like that because that crew's been together for so long. So like, I swear I left for the weekend and it came back and all of that was built out. Thanks for pouring some beers. What are we looking at here? So some of our portfolio beers, some of our more popular beers, and then also some of our specialty releases. We have seven portfolio beers that we make year round, and those range from a couple of blondes, several IPAs, to a stout. So we've got kind of a spread that's available all the time. 2018, we made 48 unique specialty beers throughout the year. We're on track to beat that number. We don't shy away from much. We're willing to try just about anything. First is our sunny days. It's a citrus blonde ale. This is just our crowd pleaser beer. This is the one that everybody loves. The beach beer, the, the lake beer. Drink all day. Uh, kind yeah, of exactly. A little bit of citrus note to that. Every year for our anniversary party, we do what's called the Brewer's Challenge. And so each member of our brew house staff is basically allowed to brew whatever beer they want. There is a tasting and it's voted on by the public. So the attendees that come here pick their favorite beer. Well, the Sunny Days, which you're drinking now, and then the Mango IPA, which are our two most popular beers. Both started as Brewer Challenge beers. The Mango IPA is hands down our most popular beer in distribution for the year three anniversary party. And it's kind of a funny story. He had forgotten to make the beer. So on his way in that morning, he stopped at 7-Eleven and he picked up like a mango shake and basically took a keg of our IPA and poured that mango shake in there. People loved it. It oh was, my God. from day one, <laughs> we could not make enough of this beer. There's a lots of mango character. Um, on the nose, the aroma mainly. You're not gonna taste a ton of mango. There's no sweetness to it. It's definitely, you know, kind of a mid-range IPA. The beer's real clear. Whatever yeah. you guys are doing for uh, clarification. Our brewmaster, George, is, is very precise. That all is watched very closely and monitored to make sure that it, that it goes right. The next one here, this is my favorite beer. This is the Big Sur Double IPA. A lot of people are scared of Double IPAs. Double IPA. Oh my God, that must be twice as bitter. The properly made double IPA is going to be better balanced. That malt sweetness balances out the bitterness and really makes a crushable beer. That's nine and a half percent alcohol. It's scary how fast that goes down. This is solid. All right, up next is our gym membership. So gym membership uh, is a double hazy. Um, so basically just a higher alcohol content more hops. Our double hazies, our imperial hazies, get more hops per barrel than any of our other beers, even the double IPA. Gym membership is brewed using the experimental hop, and that hop doesn't even have a name yet. It's like experimental hop number 40752 or whatever. We joined our, our, our fellow breweries in doing these one-off can releases. We kind of got our canning line dialed and we were able to do these and, and we're having fun with it. It's, it's fun things we can experiment with. Yeah. It's fun things our customers can experiment with and taste. This is delicious. Isn't that fun? <laughs> that is probably my favorite beer on tap. We're gonna dive you into the sours now. Okay, um, I like save those for last, that was good. We have a pretty solid sour program. Most of our sours are gonna be draft only. We have two sours on draft at least at all times and they change every couple of weeks. Our sours are, are blended sours, so basically we have the large wooden fooders in the other building. You guys probably saw them on your tour. Larry is our sour genius. None of us yeah. really know what Larry does over there, <laughs> yeah. but we know he comes back with delicious beer, so it doesn't yeah. really matter, right? So first is the Pineapple Express. It's real sweet and then it dries out like quick, but gradually, like, sure. a, like a rounded off. Yeah, it's got, it's got, it's got <laughs> like a nice lingering finish to it. Wine drinkers really seem to be gravitating towards the sours and, and they're, they're complex. There is some similarity, that barrel aged character, that, uh, that really interestingness, that's fun. People come up to me and they go, I'm not a beer drinker. And I go, I don't, I don't know what that means. All right, people, this is really important. It's okay to be a picky beer drinker. You don't have to like everything to be a beer drinker. If you've had one beer ever that you enjoyed, you are a beer drinker. You're in the club. At least that's how I feel. Apricot chamomile sour. The nice thing about sour is you want to sip on it. You want to savor it. This one is way more aftertaste than this one. It like 
I don't know, I feel like it just like expands. Totally. Do you like it a little more balanced? Do you like a little more acidity, a little more complexity? Yeah. We've got one of each for you. We have, I think, seven IPAs on tap right now. We have the Mango, we have our West Coast, we have our Double IPA. Yeah. All of those are wildly different beers. People come up to me and go, I really love the Big Sur, it's my favorite beer. What's just like it? I'm like, nothing. We don't brew two of the <laughs> you same give them a Big Sur in a different glass? <laughs> Here, try this one. Well, to me, this is the spice of life at a brewery is to sit down and get a flight. Totally. And try as much as you can. Nick, Nick really appreciates having a full pint because it changes. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I've rarely found a beer that I don't want to finish a pint of. That's true. I'm not going to say yeah. never, but rarely. This one's exciting. This is our first venture into the, what is the kind of one of the newer styles of beer, what's called a pastry stout. The rest is yours, man. Go for it. Um, a pastry stout I is... I smell Oreos straight up. Personally, I expected to not like this beer. I thought it was going to be a little sweet even, you know, for me, and it was going to be out of balance. There's a tiny amount of sweetness, and there should be. I mean, oh, it's an Oreo for God's yeah, sakes, yeah. right? Who doesn't like Oreos? Everybody at the table doesn't like Oreos. Right? Everyone right. likes All Oreos. Right, zero people. I get the Oreo in this stout. It's fantastic. I yeah. love this beer. I'm really excited about this beer. And it's going to sell out like that. Before we know it, we're going to be gone, and we're going to have to make some more. What? Twist my arm, right? It's yeah, yeah. You could almost call this a novelty beer. Yeah, and it's delicious. I mean, you know, there are yeah. those that said that IPAs were novelty beers 20 years ago, right? Like, so yeah. who knows? They're probably not going anywhere. Yeah, you put it down. You <laughs> knew you were coming back. Yeah. To it. I'm not drinking now. I got the dry January, but I put a four pack away because I know I'm going to want this, and I'm going to be disappointed if I don't save one for myself. I got <laughs> oh, one nice. hidden away somewhere. So. Well, thanks for sharing all this yeah, beer with my us. Pleasure. I think anyone who even halfway likes beer between LA and the Bay Area has to come here. I think you, it's just like know, a we, necessary stop. We are becoming that destination. People are finding out about us. The whole that's time we've important. come here, all we've heard is like laughing and good times and like And that's what we're about, smiling. right? I mean, our tagline is, you know, good people, good times, great beer. And that's what we're all about. That's awesome. That's what, that's what we're about and that's what we do. Well, on that note, like just thank you for everything. Right, my pleasure, absolutely. It's been excellent. You got it. <laughs> we got more stuff that you haven't tried downstairs. Come on down, we'll try some other stuff. El Paso de Robles, it's Espanol. <laughs>
calves. <laughs> KP! <laughs> I like it.